Hey guys, welcome back to Your Lake Fort Guide. I got another episode of the Guides Network, and this is going to be one of my favorite ones that we'll ever do. It's a special day. We got one of my, don't tell him, but kind of one of my idols <laughs> sitting right here next to me, Mr. James Nigemeyer. Hey. How you doing, son? Good, how are you? Man used to be former Bassmaster Elite Series angler, current FLW Tour angler. Listen, if you look up the mid-2000s Bassmaster stats, this was one of the most consistent fishermen on planet earth you had a run that was really i really admired it and looked up to it i thought you did a phenomenal job it's really hard to be consistent with all the different places you guys fish out there you get thrown every curveball you could in the world of bass fishing and you managed to just kind of stay up in the top echelon of the best of the best so that was awesome man man i appreciate that uh yeah it's it's a dream come true be able to get out there and fish you know on tour and and staying up you know it's difficult i think people think about Kevin Van Dam and, and all the wins in the anglers of the years. And I think the thing for me that I'm most in awe over Kevin Van Dam is his consistency over like 25 years. I mean, just his, this high level of consistency over the years and years and years and years and years. That's to me, consistency is one of the most over, overlooked things I think in our sport. We Everybody yeah. wants wins, everyone yeah. wants angler of the years and big classic champions and Forest Wood Cup champions and those types of things, but consistency is a big deal. I, yeah. I, I, I definitely look for that in anglers too. Absolutely, and we all know when it comes to tournament fishing, <clears throat> probably the most important thing is your mental abilities, your mental strengths, and your mental approach to fishing and tournament fishing specifically. And we obviously have a man who has an unbelievable, some of the most experience that anybody on earth has when it comes to tournament fishing. So today, we're gonna talk to James about tournament mentality. Well, James, first let me sincerely thank you so much for coming on here to do this. This is going to be a special treat for our viewers to get an inside look from a guy who's done it at the very highest level that exists in our sport. If you're passionate about bass fishing, if you're a high school tournament fisherman that's into that and think maybe you want to take it somewhere, this is a man you want to listen to. He's been there, done that. He's got the skins on the wall. Uh, unbelievable for you to come on here and, and do this for us. So thank you very much, first and foremost. Well, thank you for having me. It's, it's, it's great to finally get out on the water. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, James, let me ask you something. So when it comes to fishing and tournament fishing specifically, what is the mentality like? What is the best way, the best mental approach to say preparation? Because the first step of tournament fishing, you got to get prepared to go there. So how do we mentally prepare? What, what do you, what mind state do you want your mind in? How do you control your mind and keep everything focused and locked in mentally getting ready for a tournament? I think it, th that's a big question. And it is and a big I, question. Yeah, it, I think the thing about it in, in, in a lot of ways is that we, we want to go out on the water. We want to go, okay, they ought to be doing this and they ought to be doing that and ought to be doing this, those three things. I'm going to look at those and those are all great st starting points. But, but we got to also be able to be willing to be fluid and flexible and be able to change and adapt. If it, we get out there and the water's muddy, we got to be able to go over here and do this and just be keeping an open mind basically. But that we never forget that we're always in a learning process. No matter how long you've been at this, yeah. you've been fishing since you were three and you're 70 years old or whatever. It's always a learning process. Every lake is new. Every experience is new. Every time of the year. And the thing about it, I found out, and I'm sure you found out fishing Lake Fork over the years, is that we have an understanding of kind of the seasonal patterns and what generally happens. But it's very rare that year after year the fish are doing exactly what they did last year mm -hmm. and we're just always happy we try to make them do that sometimes <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> it's a place we come back to because we knew they did that this time mm -hmm. last year but we got to be willing to shift and move and, and be able to change and that's that's a big key is just being able to be flexible because we all want to go like i think we all want a formula or some sort of uh, um, recipe for success but it's it's difficult to replicate yeah. things over and over we always like to say there's no absolutes in fishing mm -hmm. uh, they'll do some weird things for weird reasons they got a small brain and sometimes they don't make sense in their decision making process and so yeah I think that's a great point to be very very open-minded I mean even especially in tournament fishing sometimes the the details or the open-mindedness and the willingness to adjust within a single day 
you've got your pattern established. You're fishing hard. You're you're doing good, and then all of a sudden things kind of fall apart on you. If you can have, there's been a lot of guys that have thrown a lot of tournaments away because they wouldn't leave what they were doing and adjust to what's now happening. Uh, have you ever seen that situation or how important is that to be willing to adjust midday? If something's different, pay attention, notice those little details, open-minded like you say, and make that adjustment. How important is that? that it is really important. I think sometimes it's, it's something that's just minor, like they've, they haven't necessarily like did a full-scale move, but they've just kind of repositioned or I was catching them on power stuff. Now I have to just kind of slow down and finesse. Yeah, the wind quit blowing. Yeah. Right. Or the water came up yeah. and they were off the bank. Now they've just moved up into that flooded cover. So just being able to change and, and be, able, be willing to try those different things are, is yeah. definitely uh, super important whenever you're out there on the water. Just kind of, uh, but at the same time, uh, this is kind of the two-edged sword about fishing in general. I've seen it where a guy said, man, my, what I had going, just quit. So I had to full scale just change and he ends up winning the tournament. But then I had, I've heard other guys, they're like, it's day four and I had three fish at one o'clock. And, and I just, this was the pattern. This is, I was dancing with the one that brought me and, and all that. And then I could have just made a change, but I just grounded out. I stayed hard headed, stayed in it. And I caught those two final fish, and I won. I wouldn't have won without them. You know what I mean? So, yeah. fishing's funny like that. Some guys just grind it all the way through, and then some guys make a change. And knowing when to do which, I think you know that's the thing we're always still learning. You know, we talk about confidence a lot. People, people that are you know high level fishing talk about confidence a lot. So let me ask you this. To me, it seems like it's in my experience just fishing day to day. You know, I don't tournament fish for a living or anything like you did. Um, but guiding, I fish every day, and I'm trying to find fish and adjust all the time and all that. It's very, very important that when you make a decision, you make the decision. Whether the, the mm. decision is to stay or go, you make that decision and you commit to it and you leave the rest behind. Absolutely, that, I, I couldn't agree more. And the other thing about it is, if you get something in your mind like, I need to do this because this isn't working, you just need to go ahead and do that. Because if you're, if you're here but your mind's over there, you're That's not, you're not yeah. helping yourself either. You either, yeah, you're right. You either need to be full in on this, or you need to change and do that. And sometimes you need yeah. to go do that. If for nothing else, then to cross it off the list. Yes, that can be. A and thing. then you may need to go back to where you were. But yeah. sometimes you need to get yeah. that clear out of your head in order to move on, move Absolutely. forward. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. All right, so we're gonna take it a little different direction. So let's talk about these. Will be two totally different aspects of the mental uh, game of fishing. Let's talk about how to handle the pressure of success. So you've, uh, you're an angler of the year race. You've, you've done really well throughout the year. You're trying to close out the deal for angler of the year and you're feeling the pressure to really perform in this last tournament of the season or it's a four day tournament, two day tournament, whatever it may be, you're in the lead going into the final day. And, and you've got some guys behind you, in your case, the best. And the, the Kevin Van Dam might be right on your doorstep how do you handle, what is the mental aspect? What, what would you recommend to, to the young tournament anglers? How do you handle fishing from the front and dealing with the pressure of success? Well, that's a great question. I think for a lot of guys, I think the number one thing for me was I had to kind of understand how I work. And the best thing that I can do is get out on the water and have that, that competitive, say, just a competitive mindset to want to do well but all the while, just kind of like in my mind, just it's a day on the water, just kind of take a step back and, and just kind of try to let go of all the pressure. I mean, I just, I go out there and I'm like, okay, this is just, this is another day of fishing, even though it's not, but it really is. It's another day of fishing. Every day we get on the water, we want to catch five big ones or we want to catch as many fish as we can, whatever it is. And so you can't, you can't attain that goal if you're just ca caught up in all the hoopla you have to focus on the you know on what you want to accomplish and so for me that's just kind of removing that pressure removing what what it all means to want to do well because you, you you know you got to make first things first and that's catch that first fish and then that second one and then that third one and if your your mind's all in the, the pressure of everything at least for me i need to get out there and just focus on the process move through each thing and do it just the way i would do if it was a fun Saturday afternoon. Now there's other guys, it works so much better if they're, and, and they'll be, you know, hopped up on a, 
on a you know a Mountain Dew or whatever. And five the, hour energy. Yeah, and monster the, baby. That's right. In the mornings, <laughs> they're you know they've got wound some, tight. some music going, and they're just you know they're just fired up, and that that works for them. The biggest thing is to try to figure out what works best for that guy, and and for me that it's. It's, you know, when I was a young kid, I was spent a lot of time just by myself or with my dad. It was just kind of that peaceful setting, trying to figure out what's going on on the water. And that's where I need to get back to. That helps me to kind yeah. of just, just figure out what's going on and, and, and bring the best five. Well, so so much in life is about self-awareness. Oh, absolutely. And in this situation, when you get put in a pressure situation, it's, it's all the more important to have some self-awareness. And like you said, know what works for you. And it's interesting, the perspective that you brought of trying to kind of clear the mind and, and understand that at the end of the day, this is a day of fishing. Mm -hmm. And whether I blow this lead or run away with this, my wife's gonna love me. Yeah. And my kids are gonna love me. Right. And my family's gonna, my friends are gonna be there whether I win, lose, or draw. And if I win, everybody's gonna be really happy for about a day. And if I lose, <laughs> everybody's gonna think about it for about a day and then it's over. So at the end of the day, that would be kind of, that's how I deal with pressure. That was, uh, I used to play some sports at a fairly high level and whenever it was a high pressure situation like that, when I was playing from the front, I used to always try to tell myself that in 48 hours, none of this matters. Mm. That's all. If you beat the world, everybody cares for about a day. If you lose, everybody cares for about a day. So just let it, like you're saying, that was my way of getting to the same place you got uh, where it was just another day of playing that game. Yeah, I, I agree. It, you really do. For me, I, I just really need to kind of remove all the clutter to the distraction and and just and just be in that moment and, and not yeah. let everything kind of wear on you and so and, and be and changing what you would do naturally. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. So that you can fit, use the talents that got you there. Trust them. Yes. They're still there. Just get everything else out of the way and go fish. Yeah. yeah focus I love on the process. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, Take it to the other end of the spectrum. And this is one for me personally that I struggle with real bad. And I know I've seen guys on your level struggle with this real bad as well. When things aren't going well, when you're fishing from the back, when you're fishing from last, when you go out there and you throw the old goose egg up on day one and you need to cut that check and you got to catch them on day two, how do you handle the pressure? This I'm not good at this one. I'm going to tell you, I'll spin it. When things go wrong, I'll spin out on you in, in my mind big time. So how do you handle the pressure of kind of getting your teeth kicked in? How do you come back from that? Well, that's a great question. Um, you know, and I've, and I've watched some guys on tour over the years, some guys that I've competed against. Some of them are really good at flip-flopping it. Maybe they had the, one of the top, uh, the, the 10 worst bags of the day, and then they come up with one of the top 10 or 20 mm -hmm. bag, best bags of the day on day two. I think the thing really is, is, is really getting back to going, okay, what, what worked for us? What didn't work for us? What would, we, what would we do differently? I think even just in the course of a fishing day, around noon, you kind of almost have to take stock in what's going on. Okay, what, what isn't working? What is working? And if, if I could look back on this fishing trip tomorrow, what would I have done differently? And, and then just try to, try to revisit that idea when you're out there in the moment, just kind of preparing for the next day. I don't know if you necessarily have to throw the baby out with the bath, bath water, so to speak, but take that into consideration. Maybe the weather's changed and, and, and just try to mold a game plan. But the thing about it that I, I think is every day's a new day. Someone's going to catch them. I'm hoping it's me. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, and, and it's hard. It's, it's hard not to carry that baggage. But I, I know one of my first few years I was on tour, one of the, Marty Stone said to me, he said, these guys have the, uh, what did he say? They have the shortest term memory of anyone you'll ever fish against. If they caught them last week, they forget about it because they know I got to catch them this week. If they didn't catch them last week, they still forget about it because they know they got to catch them this week. And, and that's a really good thing. Not just not trying to carry that into the next day. It's great to have momentum. But if it's if it's negative momentum, you gotta you gotta, you gotta get rid of pretty it pretty quick. Yeah. yeah, that's great, man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and this is kind of just a, a thought or a theory of mine, if you will. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. To me, in, in the small fishing tournaments that I fish, it seems like the guys that consistently have success, and you'll probably this is probably the case with ninety percent of the people you fished against on that level, but the mental focus the mental effort that goes into tournament fishing um 
keeping your bait in the water for a higher percentage of the day in a strikeable position, uh, just fishing harder mentally, trying harder. Uh, the, to me, that's the the big difference in guys that are that really end up going to the top and getting to that next level like you did, have just a greater ability to stay after it, not lose focus, not eat a sandwich, not slow down, like they're on it. They don't quit, they don't let up, they, they have a tenacity, a mental tenacity where they just grind it out and get after it. They never let up. Whereas other guys are like, well, we're out here fishing, you know? Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. I seem to have noticed a difference in some guys. Yeah, there, there's definitely a notice, uh, noticeable difference. It seems like for the most part, when you get out there on the water, you, I, I feel like for me, I've got to think it's going to happen at some point. I'm going to connect with them. And I don't know to what degree, but I got to be ready when it happens. Got to give yourself every opportunity. Yeah. yeah. When it happens, I want to be fully in that moment so that I can take advantage of every opportunity and and not be like, you know, thinking about what's going on over here. Did I turn the dryer, you know, is the dryer on, is the coffee pot on, yeah. whatever it is. But just being all there. All fully, in yeah, mentally. Yeah. yeah. And just, and then, but then just believing, just telling yourself, man, I haven't caught a bite in three hours, but. In the next 20 minutes, I could have the best day I've ever had. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been out there several times where you're just like, gosh, this is one of the worst days. And then you catch three, four, five, and then you're just like, right at the end of the day, and you're like, man, that's awesome. You go away from the lake thinking that was a lot of fun, but you forgot about the six hours you spent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and, oh, yeah. and so. Sometimes on Lake Fork, it's one bite. <laughs> yes. And it, it just changes the full outlook. Yeah, mm -hmm. so trying to keep in that that in the back of your mind that that it's always can happen at any moment, and then just continually being hopeful that it's going to happen. I think. Yeah. yeah. Very good. All right, one last question about tournament fishing. This ain't got nothing to do with mentality. This is just your preference. Favorite lake to fish tournament. Favorite lake to compete in a tournament on, and why? Favorite lake to compete in a tournament on, and why? So many, so many lakes that I've really loved to fish in over the years or so many different lakes that I've competed on that I've really you know I've really grown you love Okeechobee Gunnersville's a lot of fun Rayburn Toledo you know but I'll tell you there's a whole state of lakes that I just think are amazing and that's all those lakes in New York I know people go what, what? yeah yeah, yeah. New York. this is shocking me right now yeah. I'm not gonna lie I Oneida, did not expect this Cayuga those are the finger lakes there and then you've got uh You've got Thousand Islands yeah. and Champlain. Those lakes are so awesome because you can catch a four pound smallmouth and then a four pound largemouth. And the, to me, those lakes up north, there's a higher rate of, of, of bites to you know per hour than just about any place that you'll ever go. It well, like, they hide under the ice all year. They don't get fish for exactly for six right. months out of the year. And when that ice is gone, <laughs> yeah. they're biters. Yeah. And, and, and you generally have great fish catch days. It's even on a, on a day like today where it's bright bluebird, where you think maybe I'm not going to get a lot of bites, they're going to smash them. Everyone's going to catch them. They're going to be very rarely, I mean, you, you look at a lot of the standings and the weights are so tight. There's maybe a pound separation between 30 places or 20 yeah. places or something like that. The weights are so tight. The top 10 might have, you know, 18 to 20 pounds. Well, 30th will be like 16 and a half. You know, I mean, it just... So everybody's kind of in the game. Them. Yeah, yeah everyone's catching them. I love those lakes up there. I love the largemouth fishing up there. I love the smallmouth fishing up there. It's beautiful scenery. Um, I don't know why. I just, I, I love those huh. areas. I, I love the fact that you can catch largemouth and smallmouth. Yeah. And then you get a lot of bites throughout the day. That, that's just, and at the end of the day, I think I'm just, I'm, I just, I'm ate up with this sport. I love it so much. And I love just getting bites, just swinging on fish and, oh, yeah. and put fish in the Oh, boat. yeah. Yeah. That, that's a little surprising to me. I was not expecting, you, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> the best, like, best state to go fish tournaments on is New York. Yeah. Uh, probably don't want to go right now. Might want to wait till June or July. Right. <laughs> but yeah, Nate, that's that's shocking. I would not expect it. That's awesome. That's yeah, really cool. yeah, you can catch small That's great. I appreciate that. Now I'm going to spend a lot of money going to New York next summer. <laughs> Thanks, James. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, that is awesome. Dude. Hey, listen, again, cannot thank you enough for coming on here. I, this was a different episode. We do a lot of technique-specific stuff, seasonal pattern-specific stuff, and hopefully we're going to get James back out here to do some more stuff like this with us. Uh, one thing that i got to tell you guys if you want to go watch another YouTube channel that's well worth watching, that's going to give you some valuable information, check out, what is it, James Nickelmar Fishing? That's it. Yep. 
James Nicomar Fishing, we will link that in the description, of course. Uh, he has a YouTube channel. He's creating regular content every single week now. Uh, and there is some dynamite information that he's putting out for you guys. You know what we do, man. We, we try to uncover every little detail, give you guys every secret that we ever thought we had. And, and he's doing things along the same lines where he is really digging in and giving you guys a lot of great information. So if you're hungry to learn about bass fishing, definitely check out his YouTube channel, My Brother. This was so awesome. Thank you, Billy. Yes, sir. I, I have I've have enjoyed it, and I appreciate you having me on your channel. We're going to have to do it again. Absolutely. You coming back? Yeah. My man, he's coming back. <laughs> Y'all stay tuned for more James Nickmar. Drop him a comment down below. Let him know what you thought. Hey, thank you guys so, so much for watching this episode today. Cannot ever express the gratitude that I owe to each and every one of you guys to really kind of drive the vehicle that allows me to live my dream every day. So thank you guys very much, and we'll see you next time right here on Your Lake Fort Guide.